In this video, I'm going to tell you about the memory structures that were involved in an Oracle database instance. As I told you before, an Oracle instance is made up of two components. There is a memory allocation called as an SGA, otherwise called as a system global area. And there are a bunch of processes that run in the memory. So in this video, I am going to tell you about in detail about the memory components. To begin with, is something called as shared pool, buffer cache, Buffer cache, large pool, Java pool, streams pool, and log buffer. Let's understand each component in detail. A shared pool consists again of two components called as the library cache and the dictionary cache. What's there inside the library cache? All executable code called by any session that is connected to the instance is kept in the library cache. It could be SQLs or PL SQL. Now when I say there is a SQL, a SQL comes from a user session and it undergoes a parse and when a parse happens a hash value is created and the optimizer generates what is called as an execution plan. So every SQL has an SQL area which is available here inside the library cache. So if the same SQL is executed again it can reuse whatever has already been parsed and kept and execute the statement. We will look at a detailed relationship between all the components at a later point in time. Similarly, PL SQL, there can be two types of PL SQL. One is stored PL SQL objects like procedures, functions, packages, or we could call anonymous blocks. If it is an anonymous block, it has to be compiled at runtime and executed. Whereas if there is a stored PL SQL block, it has to read it from the dictionary. It has to read it from the dictionary. Dictionary is the system metadata that Oracle maintains, which is available in the dictionary cache. So the dictionary cache reads it from the data files or from the system table space, brings it into the library cache and executes it. So that's what is there in a library cache. Then coming to dictionary cache. When a SQL statement is being parsed, it needs to know whether a object of that sort exists. For example, if you made a query, select EMP ID from EMP, which is a query, it has to first validate whether there is a table by name EMP that is available, whether there is a column EMP ID within the EMP table, whether the user who is firing the query has access to that, all that it looks up into the dictionary cache before the statement can be parsed and executed by the user. So that is the primary content of the shared pool. Then comes buffer cache. Buffer cache reads from data files. So whenever you make such a query, it has to fetch all the rows of EMP and give this in this case. So it is going to read blocks 
from data files and bring them into the memory. The moment a block is read from a data file and brought into the memory, it is called as a buffer. So it is a block when it is in a data file. When a copy of the block is read into the memory, it is called as the buffer cache. So my query here, select EMP ID from EMP, when it has to be processed, all the blocks related to EMP is brought into the buffer cache and the query is processed and turned out. Now coming to an interesting paradigm, so we said the data files have blocks. How is this block created? Whenever a data file is created, which we will see later on when we manage data files and table spaces, Oracle formats these blocks as per the size specified in the parameter block size. Block size is a parameter that you create in your parameter file at the time of database creation and that is the size of each block and each block in the data file or each buffer in the memory could have one or more rows. It finally depends on how big is the block size and how big is the row size. We will look at which size to set up at a later point when we look at performance tuning. So that is what is there in a buffer cache. Large pool has specific purposes. Number one, if you set up what is called as shared server mode of database processing, it comes into use. In order to take backups with RMN, large pool is coming to use. If you do parallel query and result in doing direct IO and parallel processing might use some large pool as such. Java pool, if you store Java procedures within the database, then it makes use of Java pool. If you use streams, a means of replicating between Oracle databases, streams pool is going to be put to use. Log buffer, as and when you make changes to rows, old and new values are kept within the log buffer, which will later be written into the read log groups. So overall summary of my memory structures, these are the primary memory structures, there are other memory areas that are put to use, shared pool made up of library cache and dictionary cache, buffer cache made up of buffers from the data files, large pool, java pool, streams pool and log buffer. So this is a summary of the primary memory components in the SGA of an Oracle instance.